just some things will never change. One of those is that we're classic FM 97.3 station plays every song you know. Okay, I agree. Uh, <laughs> I can never change. <laughs> some things will never change. Yeah, keeping you company on a daily basis. And it's time for Business Half Hour here on Classic FM 97.3 because it's 8 o'clock. Oh, yes, Business Half Hour brought to you in collaboration with Naira Metrics. We have in the studio with us Ugo. And our guest this morning on the show is Moses Enyawali, and he's the founder of Top Shipping, a shipping partner that can actually be the best career services providers for international and local communities. Good morning, everybody. Hey, good morning. good morning. How are you guys doing? Good, you're cool. How are you? Fine. How are you? How are you guys doing? Yeah, we're great. Yeah, we're great. Doing good. Doing How good. was your weekend? Oh, fantastic. Great. Moses, nice to have you here. Nice to be here. Thank you guys for the opportunity. Okay. So you're into logistics, right? Yes, we are into logistics, uh, moving of goods from Nigeria to other countries in the world and from other countries in the world into Nigeria. That's 10 years experience. Interesting. Uh, so yes, 10 years experience cumulative in a bunch of different industries. I started my career as a consultant at Ernst & Young UI. Um, and then I moved to logistics when I went to work for the founder, the former co-founders of Jumia, uh, when they started a new business called Ace. Okay. Um, that's basically where I started to learn about the business. Uh, more recently, I was uh, part of the team at Sandbox, which is also a logistics business. So I have sort of extensive experience in the industry as well. Yeah. Hey, so you're not a rookie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see that. Why, why logistics, though? Uh, so to be honest with you, I, I, I don't think I found logistics. I think logistics found me. Um, while I was working at EY, there was a lot going on in Nigeria at the time. A lot of young people were doing a lot of stuff uh, with tech. And I was inspired by what Tunde Kende was doing, and I decided to go work for him. Uh, that was basically how I got into the business. Um, and yeah, and, and it just stuck. So I didn't go looking for the business. I, I went looking for a certain type of leader and founder and he was in a certain business and that's when I learned about the logistics industry. All right. Ugo, are you there? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Um, you're, you're in a very, very difficult business though, difficult space. Uh, so every time you get every, you get a young man want to go into logistics. Um, so it's, it's kind of interesting. What was the, what was the inspiration behind, um, you know, starting Top Ship? Why top ship? Why didn't you just decide to do e-commerce, a lot of those things? Why that very, very difficult space called logistics? Yeah. So you're right. Logistics is a, is a complicated and challenging business. Um, I think the inspiration, so there's two things that inspired um, me to start the business. The first thing was um, the model. Our model is completely different. We, we, we operate in the gig economy model. We don't own assets. We partner with Korea partners across the globe. Uh, so that makes that makes it very easy for us to operate and grow and scale significantly faster than most people that, that own bikes and buses and trucks. Uh, we are like Uber for logistics, right? So we are aggregating partners and working to working with them to make sure that we get the most effective services and points for the customers. Uh, that's number one. Number two um, was COVID-19, basically, COVID uh, showed everyone that logistics is an essential service. Um, uh, while, while everyone was sitting at home and no movement was around, dispatch riders were still on the road, moving things from point A to point B. So if anything, it showed us all that this is a critical uh, service. It's very important. Even in the worst of times, people still need this service. Uh, so basically, that builds my faith in the industry. Um, combined with the new model, the new approach we are bringing to board. Most of the things that kills new logistics businesses are the overhead costs. Uh, it's very expensive, getting licenses from state governments and local governments, uh, maintaining bikes and assets, managing riders and employees. Those are the things that, that, that choke them. We don't have that burden because we focus on using technology to scale, creating locations and franchises and partnerships, um, and focusing on the things that make it easy for the customer to access the service. So that's what makes us different. Our model is lighter, is the Uber model, and we can grow faster and operate with, without any losses. Very interesting. Um, I, I mean, I, I heard you say the Uber model twice now. And you also elaborated and you said that you don't have um, assets. 
So maybe you want to deep dive a little bit more into the business model. How does it work? So how do, how do your customers approach you? And then who are your typical customers? Yeah. So our customers vary from students that are sending their transcripts to, the, to Canada, to World Education Services, to people that make wigs and cosmetics in Lagos states, that make dresses, slippers, shoes, bags, that want to ship it outside the country. There's a, there's a very big market there. Uh, so those are typical customers. And then, of course, there's a regular mommy who mommy wants to send into me to a child in the UK that is in school or just wants to send a rapper to her friend, you know. Uh, so those are, that's another class of customers that we have. We also have a bunch of corporate clients that send a bunch of other things. Um, but in terms of the business model, how our customers approach us, we focus strictly on the technology. So the tech is our, is our core asset. Um, that's what makes it easier for anyone anywhere in the world to be able to reach us and say, I want to ship something. Uh, wherever you are in Nigeria, you can use TopShip. Um, so basically, if you're in Zamfara State, you can order for a pickup and we'll come pick up from your doorstep and ship it to Canada or UK or Zanzibar, wherever, wherever you want to ship it to. Uh, so that tech makes us, uh, makes us scale more than our competitors. Uh, so that's our unique asset. That's the thing that makes us unique. Um, in addition to that, we also have locations in, in, in strategic areas across the country. Our goal by end of the year, our goal is to be in every state in the country. Um, right now, we are in three states. Uh, we have three locations in Lagos, rapidly growing. We have one in Baron and Abuja. Um, and these locations basically make it, it makes it easier for people, like I said, people that want to send hair or cosmetics or Indomie to their, to their, um, to their children in the UK or the US. Uh, they can basically just walk into that location, weigh their packages, find out what it, what it will cost them, how to package it, can this be shipped, can this not be shipped, will customs hold it, will customs not hold it. Uh, these are questions that you can't really answer unless you get a physical sense of what you're shipping. So those locations make, brings us closer to the customer. Um, tech isn't everything. You have to have a physical, physical touch. Yeah, that's why, yeah. that's why Jibo is still the biggest logistics hub in, in Nigeria because people can physically go there. Uh, so yeah. we're, we're, that's what we're taking on. We're taking on that market but with technology. So when, when you go online and you see us and you, and you have a very big chair you want to send to the UK, but you don't know how to ship it, you walk into our, one of our locations. We have processing managers there that will help you package it in the best ways and most cost effective ways and then ship it for you. Right, so so let's 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 track back a bit into the story because our listeners like to know how you came up with this idea of you know top ship. How did it happen? Um, you want to take us through that journey? How you know did you get an epiphany? Did you just did you wake up one day and you say yes, I found it. This is what I'm going to do. Or was it did someone give you the idea? Was it your wife, your girlfriend, your brother? How did it happen? Tell us right. a little bit about that story. So, so yeah, a bunch of things happened that led to this point. Uh, the first thing was my experience at ACE, uh, we learned a lot about how not to do, how not to solve these problems. Um, ACE raised a lot of money, but basically spent a, a huge chunk of that money buying assets to solve logistics problems. So that's definitely something not to do. So we learned that one. Um, at Sandbox, I also learned that you can, that people actually, that a lot of people are willing to a partner with you when you present an opportunity for them to say sign up on our platform and we want to give you business so we saw that that uber model can work for logistics uh, very effectively and then so combining all those experiences uh 2020 came and uh when covid when covid basically happened i mean i'll, I'll just give you my personal experience um i had to send some stuff for my for my girlfriend um into the country and and at that time there was no way to to get get stuff into the country and basically, we had there were basically only two providers that could provide that service uh, at the time. One of them was extremely expensive and very difficult to understand. The other one was basically uh, um, not 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 basically selling that service to people like me who were shipping one-offs. So there there was clearly an opportunity, and we, I already knew how I could solve that problem given with all the things that I had seen. So I basically put all those things together. Um, it was not just my idea. I have a co-founder. I do have a co-founder. Um, and I have partners that I, that I work with. You know, these are people that have been in the industry for a while. They also helped me a lot and helped us a lot to put, put all the pieces together. Um, and as we continue to expand, we rely on their knowledge and their expertise to help us grow. Um, I'm not an island. It's not, it, it didn't come from my head. There was no light bulb moments. It's basically, the, <laughs> the, the truth is actually the combination of, of things that happened over a period of time. All right. All right. Moses, Go ahead, when it comes to funding, how did you get to fund the business? Was it angel investors? Because you know, logistics is not as capital intensive, is it? <laughs> yeah. 
So, so, so far we've been bootstrapping. Uh, for those that don't know what bootstrapping means, basically it means paying from your own pockets, uh, right? So we haven't gotten any for any any uh, outside invest investment yet. We will. We will get uh, funding. Uh, right now, we're very healthy um, um, and we can sustain ourselves going forward. We will raise money to expand and grow rapidly. Uh, but because again, like I said earlier, because of our model, we are not capital intensive. I don't have to buy 100 bikes to deliver 1,000 packages in Lagos. All I need to do is have uh, uh, 50 partners that are active on my platform and they will deliver the same 1,000 packages for me in Lagos. So my overheads are very low, significantly low, and I can still deliver way more than my competitors. So it's not as capital, as in, capital intensive as it sounds uh, because of our model. So it makes it easy for us to actually uh, grow fast and operate without running at a, at a loss. So yes, so far we've been bootstrapping. Um, but in the future, we will, uh, for expansion purposes, we will be seeking uh, external investments. All right. Um, you mentioned the challenges of COVID. Mm -hmm. Another angle to it is that how do you handle the packages, you know, mm -hmm. to avoid the spread of COVID-19? Because it's a serious concern, isn't it? Yeah, so it, it actually is. Um, so what, one thing that we did was we made sure that, I mean, we still do, we make sure that everyone that's not a hub process or processing manager does go to the go to those locations so we only make sure that the hub manager is the one that functions the location when it's handling the packages um and another thing we also do is because we work with partners that are qualified logistics operators they have processes in place to make sure that packages are handled professionally especially in the time like this um there are standards that, that, have, that have been set in place to make sure that those things happen so we rely on them as well for for, for on, on that end on our own part we play a role we make sure that our that in our hubs we practice all the measures that we're supposed to practice the social distancing and handling packages well covering our faces wearing gloves uh making sure the customers are aware of these same restrictions so that we can keep everyone safe but the most important thing is we make sure that anyone who doesn't need to physically contact or come in contact with a customer or a package doesn't do so so customer care technology operations they all work remotely only the hub managers that handle packages work at the hubs and they still take measures to make sure that they're that, that, that they're safe all right interesting interesting um lagos in case you're just listening uh this has been um you know an interesting uh conversation so far um this is business half hour if you're just tuning for the very very first time um, we do this every Monday, um, 8 to 8.30. Uh, we've been speaking with Moses uh, Enewali. Moses Enewali is the co-founder of Topship uh, Logistics Company. So Moses, I, I heard you talking a little bit about, um, you know, you using the, the, the Uber style. Uh, quickly, in just two minutes before we go on break, where, where do you, how do you battle with the challenge or how do you confront the challenge of dealing with people? Because even though you don't own assets, logistics is really about people management. Uh, yeah. It's a lot about map management because the reason why people struggle with it is, you know, you're managing bikers, you're managing the people who are cargoing your things. And so how do you manage all that process? Do you have service level agreements with, uh, you know, your shipping, your, your partners, with the default, what happens? Do you have insurance? What, what's all that process like for you? Yeah. Yeah, so to answer your question, we absolutely have SLAs with every partner that we work with. Everyone signs an SLA. Uh, we also have insurance policies across board for fidelity guarantee, burglary, theft, goods in transit. Those things are very important in this business because packages will get missing. It's, 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 it's a short thing. If you ship a, a thousand packages, maybe a hundred will get missing, maybe 50 will get missing. It happens a lot in the industry, either missing or damaged. So goods in, goods in transit insurance is a critical part of what we do. And we make sure that we absolutely have it and we inform the customer of what it is. Sometimes we resell extended insurance to the customers to make sure that these things are protected. Uh, in terms of dealing with our partners, look, we have SLAs and we try to sanction them when they default or when they uh, make mistakes. But another thing that we've learned is um, empathy when it comes to dispatch riders, a lot of people are very harsh and, and unrealistic when they think about dispatch riders. You know, for example, a rainy day in Lagos, um, a lot of things get disrupted, but people still expect dispatch riders to deliver packages uh, on time without any hitches. You know, it's an unrealistic expectation that everyone seems to have. I fall victim sometimes when I order something, you know, but these guys risk their lives, you know, literally when they're out there on the roads, uh, battling all the odds that they battle to get packages to us. So empathy is one thing I've learned with experience to practice. 
because they're not all bad people. You know, the, everywhere there, there are stories about these bad riders all over the place being unrealistic, being unreliable, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. They're not all that way. A lot of them put in a lot of efforts, but they just battle lots of difficult odds. So I've learned to, we've learned to practice empathy, listen to the reason if there's a default or an issue, listen to reason, and then work to see how we can resolve it with the customer. Again, remember that we are the intermediary between these partners and the customer. So when we hear from them, we transmit the information in the best way to the customer to make sure that everything is balanced. We understand the challenges that they face on the field every day. Law enforcement stops them a lot. They get in accidents very frequently, rainfall, delays movement. Uh, so these things are things that we try to manage going forward. But then again, hey, it's, it's part of our business. It's difficult, but it's, it's, it's what it is. All right, if I, we're going to go on break, right? Oh, yes, uh, it's time for a short break. We'll be back in a few moments. <laughs> Business of all here on Classic FM oh, yes. 97.3. Uh, don't forget, we're talking to Moses and then Wale, who is the founder of Top Shipping. I'm Ifanya Tama, Bukola Gunride, and Ugo Dre also here. Welcome back, Moses. Thank you. All right, welcome back, Lagos. If you're just tuning in, you've heard it. We're speaking to Moses. Is the Moses Enewale is the co-founder of Top Ship. So Moses, uh, you know this is a this is a live program, and we've got uh, we're also live on Zoom. So we have, you know, people who participate as well in, in this program. So shout out to some of the attendees. I'm just going to, you know, mention some names. There's Lola Dori, there's Tuyos Yusuf, there's Ibel, there's Basil, there's Chukuma. So we've got them right here as well. Uh, and there's a question here for you uh, yeah. from, from the participants. And somebody here is saying, do you see yourself becoming the major last mile logistics partner for the biggest e-commerce companies in Nigeria? handling all their last mile delivery deliveries to customers. Hmm. That's um, dreaming big. Yes. So to answer that question, absolutely we do. And it's not just a dream. We actually have a formula to solving, to, to, to being, to being there. We are, uh, uh, we are aggressively aggregating partners in every state, in every local government in the country. Um, the reason why we're doing that is because once we have that network, we can basically build anything on top of it. We can do food delivery, we can do on-demand delivery, we can do real-time delivery once that network is robust. So yes, uh, in the next five to 10 years, I see a lot of big e-commerce players uh, um, leaving their own, because I know a lot of them own their own logistics arms. They will, they will most likely leave their own logistics divisions and focus on using our platform to fulfill the deliveries because it's cheaper and it's more effective for them. And we have the network, we have the manpower to actually fulfill it. So yes, to answer that question, yeah. Yeah, uh, be funny, Bukola. Moses, at the, when we were at the break, Moses told us that this is one business that was born during COVID-19. What do you guys think? Yeah, quite interesting, you know, where, where others see challenges, you, know, you find the opportunities, which is quite, it's quite good, quite good. Yeah. Yeah, Lagos. So, I mean, Moses, we're, we're talking at the back, uh, backstage, and Moses was like, I mean, this was the COVID-19 bond business. So it's kind of incredible. But Moses, so you're like um, five, six months into this business. What has it been like in terms of managing employees? Are you, is it still you and your partner or are you, are you on a hiring spree? How do you manage that whole process? So yes, we are actively recruiting uh, because we're growing every day. Um, it's the most difficult challenge when you run a business in Nigeria, uh, mm. managing, man, finding the right people and managing them and keeping them. Uh, when you find good talents, um, it's hard to keep them, right? So it's one of the biggest challenges that anyone would face running a business in Nigeria. Um, we, we try to find creative ways to look for people and uh, uh, retain them. One of the solutions that we've been using since the beginning has been Stuturn. Stuturn is a solution that helps you find uh, people that are either just finishing university or in university that wants to do IT. It's actually very effective. Uh, you pay them a fee and they, they, they save the CVs for you and get you good talent. So we've been using them uh, some, for some, for some, to find some roles. Uh, but more importantly, I, I work a lot with referrals. Uh, when I know someone that is, a, that is a player, I like to get referrals from them because I believe that A players know other A players. But it's a very difficult challenge, I'll be very honest with you. Um, our team is rapidly growing, rapidly expanding, and we've had to um, change the way we communicate with each other, change the way we work together, become more formal and professional so we can manage everyone's uh, um, work, workplace expectations. So yeah, I would absolutely say that it's one of the biggest challenges that you would face running the business in Nigeria. People think it's sales, 
but it's actually the people, it's actually your, your, your employees. Because if you think about it, when you go to buy uh, something at Mr. Biggs, uh, it's not the CEO of UAC you're meeting, it's, the, it's that small girl that is there selling the meat pie yeah. that, that she is Mr. Biggs to you at that time. You know, and if she's rude or, or doesn't treat you well, Mr. Biggs is a useless brand to you because of that experience. So that's, that's a very critical uh, role and we, have, we pay a lot of attention to it. Born in the COVID-19 period, do you have any, um, do you adopt work from home or do you guys have physical offices? How are you guys navigating through the new norm? Yeah, so it's a combination of both. Um, some, some, some people work from home. Uh, if, you don't, if you don't need to be in an office, you don't, you don't come to the office. You still work from home. It's, 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 it's better, it's safer that way. Uh, but some people, some people absolutely have to be at a physical location, like the home managers, because they need to attend to customers. Um, but I'll say one thing, though, uh, working remotely has, has, has negatively impacted creativity and brainstorming in an office. Um, and sharing ideas oh, and trying oh. to, you know, bump stuff each, off each other. So it's been challenging. To say. It's been actually been challenging. So you're not a work from home fan, basically, for your kind of business. I, I am not a work from home fan. I personally, I like to see people look into their eyes and talk to them and engage them. Uh, that's not something you can do on Zoom, <laughs> or you know, it's, <laughs> Zoom is very structured and you have to schedule a, a brainstorming session. It's not very, it's not very spontaneous. Uh, but yeah, we've had to. I'm sure everyone has had to adopt in this, adapt in this, in this new, new, new era. Clearly, uh, talking yeah. about the future of um, your line of business, we've seen some really mm -hmm. interesting videos of uh, people delivering stuff with drones. You think mm -hmm. that's the direction mm -hmm. that you're going? So we. I believe that in the future we will consider it. There are lots of things to consider, um, especially in the Nigerian context. It's very, it looks very fancy. It looks very, you know, uh, exciting and sensational. But does it actually work? Uh, how how expensive are those drones? How safe is it to deliver via drones? Um, if you're if you're trying to deliver a, a package, a, a, a MacBook Pro using a drone in in Okokomaiko, um, what are the what, how do you get that done? What are it was that area boys don't hold the drones down and still the map. So there are all these things that are real, <laughs> real life scenarios they have to look at. Um, and then again, is it how, how cost effective is it? Drones are very expensive right now. Um, so it's, it's one of those things that we just, we, we're, we're waiting to see how it plays out. Um, I know that in the future, a lot of cheaper, uh, more cost effective drones will come out and then that, that option will become a more valid um, option to consider. But for now, we're just, we're watching, we're observing. Interesting. Um, so, so we're, we're getting towards the end of the program, and I was just going to ask you this this one question. In terms of um, scaling and and where you see yourself five years from now, uh, is this um, between now and the next five years going to be a ten million dollar business, a one million dollar business? You know, where do you put the marker for this? So, five years, I would say a hundred million dollar between a hundred to to three hundred million dollar business. Um, and wow. I'll explain why. I think, I believe, I strongly believe that we are in a, we are in a, we are in a space that's rapidly growing. If, if anyone has been on Instagram or Facebook in the last two years, you've been paying attention. I'm sure you've seen a thousand hair, makeup, cosmetics manufacturers spring up from Nigeria everywhere in, in, everywhere in, in the country. Not just Lagos. Sure. You'll be shocked. Kaduna State, Ogun State, uh, every, everywhere, basically. Nigerians have learned that they know how to do something that everyone in the world wants. Uh, wig, Nigerian wigs are used everywhere in the world by American celebrities uh, use Nigerian wigs because they're, they're cheaper and they're better actually. And they're hand woven and it's actually better than what you get in the US. So a lot of the stuff that we make here in the country, for example, think about ABBA. Uh, what if every, every ABBA boy can sell their slippers and their belts to the, to the US and the UK, uh, just like that. And that's what Topship is going to do for them. So yes, I believe that in the next five years, we will be, if not a billion dollar business, at least a two to three million, uh, two, two to three hundred million dollar business, because just because of the potential, the share potential of the, of the space that we're dealing in, and then the growth rate, and then our model. So I, I believe, I strongly believe that we will be there. Yes. Right. Interesting. Whoa, three hundred million dollar business. That's that's a, that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> the tall order, but I mean, I, I think I, I like the optimism. I like I like the positivity you show. Um, here, uh, before we go to the very last segment, and Pukola is going to take that one, uh, asking you what you think about what your byline is. But let me ask you this one: so that name, Top Ship, hmm. was it cliche or was there something behind that name? 
to be honest with you, I was brainstorming with my brother and we just came up with the name. Uh, uh, there's no, <laughs> there's no, you know, fancy story about it. We're just looking for a name that works, uh, a name that's easy to remember, a name that's easy, and then we just picked it. All right. Okay. So <laughs> Tell us, uh, Moses, you know, usually there's something that actually pushes you. There's some mantra that you have that mm. just motivates you all the time. So what mm. is that mantra that you have? So for me, I heard it, my, one of my professors in school said it and, and it just stuck. And that, and that, to me, that phrase is the summit that you've worked so hard to reach will give you a better view of other mountains to climb. Um, and, and it's so powerful for me because in my life, every time I work hard to achieve something, when I get there, I see there's so much more to do. Um, and, and so I just keep pushing myself because you, you can never get comfortable. You can never get comfortable. You never retire. You never die. You know, you keep pushing yourself because there's so much more to do. And whenever you accomplish your goals, you see so much more that you can do from that position of advantage uh, and privilege that you've just gotten to. So that's, that's literally what pushes me. You know, every time I think of it. Say it again. Say it again. So, so, the, so the phrase is the summit, the summit you've worked so hard to reach will give you a better view of other mountains to climb. That's amazing. 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 That's deep. I like that. <laughs> I like that. I can relate to that. Goodbye, Bukola. That's our show for the week. All, all right, right, then. Thank you very much, Moses. Wish you all the best in this one. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I wish you all the best. So. All right, Ugo. Have a great day ahead, too. Thank you. And to our Have participants, great, thank you very well as well. Bye. All right. Bye.